Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And before I start this video, I'd like to say to all the Greeks, uh, Allah Selager, Elas Athanati. Well, this video <clears throat> is about uh, the mainstream calculus formulation and how it was fixed using my historic geometric identity, something which uh, a lot of you have seen, but and, and you've seen a lot of it for the derivative, but not much for the integral, because it's actually n not as easy as the new calculus. Um, the problem is that <clears throat> to establish the definite integral without using any nonsense concept of infinity infinitesimals or the circular rot of limit theory um, one has to include the extraneous terms this expression here so if you look at this applet what's happening here is i've chosen a function which is 3x squared and i've shown you how you can find it using the geometric identity and it doesn't matter how many partitions you have it won't change the value of the area <clears throat> which is calculated exactly without using limits or infinity or infinitesimals. And it's actually affixed to your broken mainstream calculus. Uh, of course, the, the new calculus is far better than this. It doesn't have this extraneous term. Uh, but this here explains to you how you can formulate your mainstream calculus correctly. Okay? So... I'll put a link to this applet, which you can download, and I'll explain to you how you can change these parameters so that you can see it work with any other function. In other words, it doesn't just work for a particular function. It works for any smooth function. So now that I've covered that, I shall also place a link to this <clears throat> uh, document or article which has been written and explains how uh, this new fundamental theorem is produced. So this here is the fundamental theorem of calculus, or in this form here, it doesn't really matter. Both of them are the fundamental theorem of calculus. What happens, as I explained earlier, is, is that this is the extraneous term because of Newton's uh, really stupid method of approximating the tangent line using uh, ever closer secants. Okay, so that was flawed and it's bogus and the first principle method is also bogus because you need to know the limit in order to find, in order to prove using your epsilon delta garbage that the limit is valid, right? So you have to guess it and then you have to prove, show that it works, which is very circular because if you don't know it, you don't have any systematic method of finding it, right? And the first principles method is not systematic because it uh, is a lot of... Uh, nonsensical arithmetic. In other words, h is never zero, <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, no secant line can ever be the tangent line. So the finite difference that you have is never the slope of the tan tangent line. And you have to resort to all sorts of theory, which takes you many months, in, in most cases, years to learn. But this is far simpler in that respect. But you still would need to study it a little bit. So... I'm going to leave you with this, and uh, I'll probably chat to you again soon. I'll probably go back to uh, producing some more videos on Euclid's elements or maybe some other interesting mathematical topics. My name is John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.